We're here at GSR 16 in Shamar Sheikh in Egypt, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr. Sharif Hashem, who is the Vice President of Cybersecurity for the NTRA, the National Telecommunication Regulatory Authority of Egypt. Mr. Hashem, thank you very much for being with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Now, we've had a wonderful uh, GSR here. We've had a lot of uh, interesting conversations going on here. Uh, obviously, I know that you're, you're Vice President in charge of security for, for the NCRA. How important is trust in today's efforts to build uh, smart societies? Trust is a very important pillar of any information society, especially when you talk about smart services, smart applications. And as such, uh, individuals, companies, uh, different stakeholders interact and uh, they do their business, they uh, connect with each other, they go to social media, they um, uh, really receive, uh, whether uh, it is work-related uh, or, or business-related, education-related uh, or cultural aspects of communication, and as such, they'd like to see uh, this communication secure and uh, they like to maintain their privacy and definitely there is a role for a regulator to make this happen without the in, a, in a transparent way so that the citizen doesn't worry about the technology which technology is being used but uh, 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 I mean measures and norms should be put in place so that the security and the privacy are maintained in a way uh, to really uh, build this trust Trust is a result, really, of measures that are put in place, uh, that we reach a level of trust, that citizens trust that their information is going to be shared, secured in the way that they expect, no surprises. And uh, also in terms of customer service and customer support uh, or citizen support at large, this is something that needs to be taken into uh, consideration because when we think about doing business offline, you already see the other person or the other entity. You go to a certain facility with certain logos, uh, I mean at the front of the facility. So you know exactly where you're going, what you're going to do, what to expect. But if you go to a website that says this is the ministry of XYZ, that means that this site could be legitimate or could be a fake site. And if you start exchanging information with that site, then uh, it could be putting you at risk. So uh, one way of handling this is to have uh, a trust building measures, uh, trust building norms, and confidence building norms within uh, uh, the, the circles, different circles, whether it is technical or service uh, circles, if technical means the operators, the telecom operators, the internet service providers, or uh, it could be the, the, the other service provider. If it is banking, it would be the bank. If it is uh, government, it would be the government uh, officials or government uh, uh, public uh, services uh, and should cover the, the, the technical regulatory aspects of creating this trust environment. Uh, without this, uh, really, uh, we'll be hindering, we'll be wasting the infrastructure and we will be putting our population at risk. And I suppose it's also keeping people informed and letting them know what to look for and, and also giving them that environment of trust. How uh, can we maintain trust, in your opinion, in today's world? I'll tell you, uh, without being philosophical about it, but you see, the point is, uh, individuals, uh, we try to avoid risk, but really our life is about managing risk. Uh, risk management is key to the success of this trust environment. So uh, uh, educating individuals is step one, so that the individuals, the organization would know exactly uh, uh, what type of measures are being applied, what type of data uh, uh, is being collected, and who has access to this data. And even in designing, uh, f without being technical about it, but in designing the, the, the way the service is being performed, the service provider uh, doesn't need to know more than what is really required for his business. For instance, uh, when you go to a grocery store and you buy commodities, you buy uh, some sugar, some whatever, bread, they don't ask you for an ID for this, right? So, so there is no requirement. If it is being sold online, really it's not required. They need to know where to deliver this service and that's it. And that you have enough money, electronic money, to pay for it. Uh, uh, collecting more money uh, more information, sorry, uh, about this means that putting your data at risk, because that would be a grocery store collecting everything about you, uh, potentially putting you at risk if that store got, got hacked into, the data could leak out, and we have seen over the past maybe 10, 15 years, uh, uh, incidents where, where really millions of data records were leaked out 
the challenge of leaking out data is really uh, not only putting the, the individuals at risk, which is really a big uh, uh, really a breaker to the trust circle, but also uh, there would be economic and financial uh, repercussions that would uh, take several months really to deal with. Uh, so we'd like to avoid it. Use in technical terms, encryption, uh, secure channels, uh, secure uh, ID cards, or, or like uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, these are maybe technical terms, but all the citizen or the individual need to worry about is that there are certain procedures of getting this service. He, know, he or she would know exactly how to perform this, and if something goes wrong, he knows where to call and what to do. There would be insurance. Because again, we, we say that the, the individual is, is much weaker, in a much weaker position than the institution. The institution can, can uh, really create insurance uh, uh, I mean, uh, framework around this service provision so that if there is any fraud, any wrongdoings that are beyond the control of the individual, that there are ways really to mend this and, and to make sure that the individual doesn't get hurt because of really fraud uh, actions. Uh, so th this is basically uh, several components that would result in the individual or the companies or the whole society feeling or trusting the technology. And especially now, I cannot talk about trust without talking about the Internet of Things. Now many of our devices are linked to the Internet. They, have, they know where we are, the locations, they know what we are doing, uh, starting from your smartphone, your fridge at home. Uh, uh, so some houses, you know, the, the smart bulbs now, they, 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 they can really, f for facilitate or improving the quality of life and, and rationalizing the use of electricity, there are ways of controlling them. As such, they can, if tapped into, they can really be used uh, to profile a person and have that person or that individual or that company uh, being subjected to an attack by hackers or uh, malicious activities. So uh, uh, the education is important, having the regulatory uh, framework to make sure that the service providers, the technology providers, they have the right measures in place, and making sure that the whole, uh, really, the whole information society is reaping the benefit from the technology without being uh, exposed to unnecessary risk. Now, at the beginning, I alluded to the fact that there have been some great conversations going on here at uh, GSR 16, uh, very excellently hosted here in Sharm el-Sheikh. I just wanted to find out from you, what have been the, the key takeaways for people who have been unable to attend? Well, th this is a meeting mostly for, for regulators and uh, companies and people who are engaged in, in, in this regulatory framework. And really, it is challenging to everybody. So uh, the information, uh, uh, most of the information, the outcomes, the uh, discussion papers are hosted uh, on the website of the, uh, the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union. And, and I would encourage whoever is interested to follow up this dialogue because it's an ongoing process. Everybody is learning. Uh, international organizations like the ITU, SAU, and entity and, and they have a role to play. Regulators have their roles to play. It's very interesting for whoever is in, uh, really fascinated by how the, the, the smart society terms are being used, the, the benefits, the potential benefits of such technology is being exposed uh, to, to learn about really how to manage this, how to in a regulatory framework and how the this regulation is evolving include uh, really and requires a strong partnership with everybody, with the, the NGOs I start from the NGOs, the private sector, government, and learning from each other, learning about best practices. And the ITU uh, is really a great place to go to uh, if, if you need more information of if somebody would like to know more about it. Sharif Hashem, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.